This is going to be an interesting video to record. Alright. Hmm. If you don't know, I have dissociative identity disorder. Short. The short, like, version. DID. I have DID. Basically, it's a... It's a disorder. <laughs> Great explanation. But today I'm going to be talking about the first time an alter communicated with the host. Now this is from what we can remember. Um, timeline's always fuzzy with these things and memory can be lacking with these things. So this is the first time that we can remember clearly and it's like even then it's still a bit funny but anyway so just keep that in mind if I ever say something different in the future as being our first time it doesn't mean that I'm lying it just means that memories have popped up or something like that it happens with DID quite often um, sometimes our memories can't be trusted. <laughs> so, the first time an alter ever communicated with the host. Now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the first time was myself communicating with the host. I am not the host of the system. I am the primary protector. I am 11. Now, I, I say it was me, but it wasn't me. I have gone through a lot of integrations and splits myself uh, since this time so I'm not the same person as I was then but I still have the same memory from that because I took that memory with me when I split and when I integrated I still have those memories so a lot of alters have this memory because they were part of the integrations of the splits right I'm kind of making sense I don't know Basically, I am not the same person anymore as the person in the story that communicated with the host. But I have the memory because I was part of them. I don't know how to explain that, but if you aren't familiar with DID terminology, it's probably going to be really difficult for me to like explain this story. I'll have some basic terminology in the description. <sighs> now, <laughs> I'm not going to cry during this video. Not going to happen. I sometimes talk videos out, like out loud, so that I remember what I want to say when I'm saying it. Um, and I started crying. I didn't realize how... emotional this kind of was and I just the, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. when it happened I was sitting out front of my grandma's place now first thing I want to say my grandma is amazing okay I love my grandma she pretty much raised me she provided safe haven for me I love my grandma so much Please do not come to any conclusions about my grandma, okay? She did not ever intentionally do any harm to me. Please do not, do not try and guess my trauma, especially with my grandma. Just saying, just putting that out there, my grandma never intentionally ever did anything intentionally to me. It just happened at my grandma's. I remember I was sitting out front of my grandma's place and we were waiting for someone. I can't remember who we were waiting for, but we were waiting for someone to pick me up and they were going to take me home. I lived in more than one home when I was younger, so I, I can't remember where I was staying that day. <sighs> I remember having this sick feeling, like I was scared. Ah. Uh, Like, I was a nervous kid, I was always on edge, I just never felt at rest. And 
I don't know why I was nervous this day, but I was. I don't know if something happened leading up to this event. I don't have very good memory of anything before this. But I think it had been a long day. And I just was nervous about something. I was just not... It was just a little bit too much for my younger self to handle. And I, even though it was too much to handle, I remember feeling very in between nervous and at peace. It's a very, very weird feeling because I was feeling both of it at the same time. It was like I could acknowledge that I was feeling very nervous, but at the same time, I, I couldn't connect with that feeling. Like I, w I could recognize that my body was nervous, but I couldn't actually feel it. If I'm... It, it, if that, if you understand, I felt very numb, and but I could tell that the body was nervous. People who have gone through trauma probably understand that feeling. It's like it's so overwhelming that your body kind of just shuts that feeling out because it's so much to handle. And again, I don't think it was just any specific event. It was just ongoing like it was just building up and building up and then it was just at a point where I was like e no <laughs> and I remember sitting there thinking like who do I who do I who do I honestly connect with about this who do I go to and I didn't feel like I had anyone please remember again do not assume like do not try and guess my trauma but mm, the lives of the adults in my life when I was younger were very complicated, very major things happened, and a, most of the adults in my, most of the adults in my life did the best they could with the situation they were given, but children are very vulnerable, and I wasn't i didn't I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't know that much about the situations and it was too much for my young brain to handle and to understand so I felt very alone because I felt like you know all these adults they just I didn't feel like I really had anyone to turn to or anyone to express how I was feeling because they had so much stuff going on things that I didn't understand as a child so I couldn't I felt like I couldn't connect with anyone and no one was there for me in the way I needed them to be and I remember feeling so fucking exhausted, honestly so exhausted with everything, with life. I just, <sighs> you know when you're a kid and you feel like you're going to be a kid forever? It was like that. I just thought, I'm going to be a kid forever, like I'm going to be in this situation forever. I'm going to feel like this forever. I'm never going to be in a position where I feel at peace and I feel safe and I feel like I feel okay. Like, <laughs> I just couldn't see myself. I just remember feeling so, so tired. And I think this was a split. I've split. I can't describe the feeling, but it was like, it was like, I don't even know how to explain it. I was, I remember thinking to myself, I am me, I am me, I am me, I am me. It was really weird, it was just this thought that was going over and over in my head, I am me, I am me, I am me. And then, all of a sudden, I got this thought that I am not me, I am not me, I am not me. It was just playing over and over and over again in my head. And then, and then, now here's where it doesn't make any sense because I have memories from the host's perspective, but I was part, I was the altar actually saying these words, but again, that's what happens, weird things happen with integration and memories get weird and anyway, I remember... 
telling. See, I remember being told, so as the host, being told that we were going to be okay. And I remember her saying, like, I remember the host saying, there is, you know, we don't need anyone else. Like, we have each other. And then me saying, you know, doesn't matter where we are, like, what happens. You know, we've got each other, and one day we will have a home, a home where we feel safe. I remember telling her that. Hello lovelies, I'm 15, I'm making my first appearance because 11, darling, you're not making much sense, so I'm just putting this clip in to try and help explain what you were trying to say. Basically, she's talking about a split that happened a long time ago while we were sitting out front of our grandma's place. She's telling the story from the host's perspective because that is the memory she feels closest to. It's really complicated with memories because we had many, many integrations and splits during our teenage years. So she has the memories of both the host and the altar that split off in this story. I hope that makes sense. And I don't think I've ever felt so connected and so close to the host before. It was... I don't think I'm ever going to forget this, honestly, this day. And I remember it was like I knew that I was going to remember this day because it was like just everything in that moment seemed so clear, like I had come out of some kind of dissociative dream. And in that moment, everything was so clear and just felt so real. And I was, it was just, it was really honestly confusing to experience because I wasn't used to it but it was kind of terrifying again I've experienced many integrations and splits since then I don't know how accurate this memory is and if it can be trusted but I believe that for the most part it's really accurate um, because when I'm close to this memory, it's almost like a traumatic memory, the way I remember it, as in it's so clear and vivid, but I'm not so close to the memory right this moment. I just, it was such a weird thing because we both just accepted each other's existence, like we knew each other existed. I, the host and myself, knew we, we existed and just accepted it. Didn't think it was weird and didn't question it. It was just there. And then time went past and we kind of grew apart and communication got fuzzy and we just didn't really. <laughs> the host, you know, just no, doesn't, we don't exist. It was, it, it DID is weird. I'm just so thankful for the host, and I know she's thankful for me. It was... <laughs> I don't want people to take my experience and it be like, this is the textbook version, like, if you don't experience this, then it's not real, That it's not how DID works, it's a very individual thing, um, tailored to everyone's individual needs and experiences, nobody's experience with DID is wrong. Um, never question anyone's experience with DID because you are never in a position to be able to tell on the internet like this. You can never tell. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you listening to my story. I hope people with DID were able to relate to the story or feel connected in some sort of way. If you don't have DID, thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something and I hope I was able to help spread awareness for this. I really appreciate you watching my videos, especially when they're about DID. I know a lot of people are on my channel because I talk about maladaptive daydreaming and not because I talk about DID. So if you are here because you watch my maladaptive daydreaming content and you're here watching my DID content as well, please know that I appreciate you so much. Anyway, that is all for this video. I'm going to go now. Thank you again.
for watching and bye bye from Care Bear.